dispute. Put on back. First, I want to say I've never been fired before. I just want to say that I have a, an amazing work history. I've never been fired. I've always moved up. And to be honest with you, I've only had five jobs in my life. You know, my first job was Brown Co Factory because it was 2007 to 2012. So I worked there for about I say close to like four and a half, five years about that. That was good. I did retail for about 10 years altogether. But I worked at Bell to Colfax for about five years. Um, started off as a sales associate. Within three years, I made it up to supervisors. Well, I was customer service supervisor. That was a good time too. I was real young, my first job. You know, never asked my parents for for literally nothing. I never really asked my parents for anything. And I'm the youngest, you know, so I always had a hustle, you know, I always had a hustle to go get my own. I rely on nobody else. My father went when I was young. He, he always told me that boy ain't nobody ever gonna give you nothing, you know. And I live by that, right? So when I turned 18, I was stable. I, I ain't gonna lie. I was so wet in and out of the streets. You know what I mean? But I always had a job. I never was. I never was without one, right? Turn 18. 19. My parents go to Louisiana for like two weeks. That's, that's where I'm from. My parents go to Louisiana, go see the family. And then they come back I and mean, I'm out of the house. Father never asked. He never questioned. He already, knew, he, already he always knew that I would be straight. Um, But nevertheless, I went and got it on my own. So 2007 to 2012, you know, I worked at Brunson Kovacs for five years. After I departed from Brunson Co Factory, you know, got my first apartment with my current wife. You know, we've been together for about 12 years. Um, and from there, when I moved to my apartment, which is about an hour away from where I was living before, I worked at Big Y. I worked for a grocery store called Big Y. I did customer service there. I also worked in the cooler, in the, pro in the produce section. That was a decent job too. I worked there for about a year and a half. Maybe, yeah, about a year and a half.
from there. I departed from there. I moved again, my wife and I. She was my girlfriend at the time. We both moved, excuse me. We both moved and um, I started working for Target. Early morning shift, 4 a.m. shift. And I started working for Big Y. Both these jobs were a year, I mean a week apart that I started those two. And both of those jobs, I worked there for two years. All right. So I would be up at what, 2.30 in the morning, get up, go to work, be there for four o'clock. And I'd be there from four to about 12, one o'clock in the afternoon. And from there I went to Berlin, I mean, I went to uh, Bed Bath and Beyond. That's crazy, All every job that I have, damn, that started with bees. That's funny. But yeah, uh, and I say from about two o'clock to eight at night, I'd be at Bed Bath & Beyond. So I was putting up about 14 hours a day for about two years, six days, you know. Um, and both of those were, I'm not gonna say the best paying jobs, but they were fun, they were, they were fun jobs. I got to communicate with people. I got to learn how to sell. You know, uh, the basic one was, was Target, you know. Because all I was doing was unloading and restocking and stuff like that. Then I developed to become a, a a team lead where I worked in soft lines. If you don't know what soft lines is, soft lines is the clothing department. You know, um, that was pretty cool. But Bed Bath and Beyond, I actually had to learn how to sell. Not saying that it was commission because it wasn't, but. I had to learn how to sell. I had to take six months of classes um, because they diversed in all different types of product that, you know, when it came down to detail, you know, making sales, and this is all around the board, you have to know what you're selling, how to sell it, how to convince the customer to believe in what you're selling them, you know? Because you want you want you want whatever you're selling them to to fit them, their lifestyle, personality, whatever it may be, you want it to be custom for them. So I had to take six months of classes, you know. In which that was it was it, it was a good time, you know. Uh, but I'll say Burlington Co Factory. Let me go back to Burlington Co Factory. I worked at Burlington Co Factory for about. about five years and it was a learning curve for me and I'll say about every week I probably made about 250 to 300 dollars a week because it was weekly big Y I made about 250 to 300 then I went to Burlington I mean to Target and Bed Bath and Beyond and between those two I brought in about 600 every two weeks you know both of those jobs were part weekly you know so um it wasn't good money but the mor the morals was there you know it was good management you know you met good people and that's all you really look for like for a comfortable environment to work for when you work at any job, find any job, you know. So from Target and Bed Bath, I departed from there. And I started working for the company that I currently work for now, which is com coming up on my six year mark in March, right? This job that I work is a great paying job. And I make more money than I made at all of those jobs together, you know. Um, I make more money than Target and Bed Bath both combined, currently. And it's been going up for the last, 
every year that I've been at this place has been the money just going up, but the labor, because this is a back end, it's a, it's, a, it's a warehouse. You know, I currently work for a company called UNFI, United Natural Foods. Selector, started off as a selector. Uh, and my current position I hold as the warehouse trainer. So I deal with all new hires that come, that come in to my warehouse, train them on machines, electric jacks, forklifts, cherry pickers. You know, um, these are things that, that we require when you come and work for us, right? You know, ever since I've started this job, the money's good, all right? The people that I work with around, they're good people. The benefits are great. It's a great 401 retirement, life insurance, long-term, short-term, you know. Um, it's all good, but it's a sacrifice that comes with that. And I've sacrificed a lot of my my personal life. I've been married for three years and I miss a lot of time with my wife. You know, I live I live in Connecticut and all my family lives in Louisiana. But I nevertheless I say I, I've I've missed a lot of time with them. Being that ever since I've started at this job I've worked and this is two thousand sixteen to current. March of 2016 to current. I've worked nothing less than 12 and 13 hours a day. Nothing less. That's a lot of that's a lot of hours. Five days a week. That's 60 some to 70 some hours a week. You know? Um and it's hard. I drive two hours a day, one hour there, one hour back. You know, so that adds on to my work day. But every year that I've been here, it's just gotten worse and worse. I've been through four gyms. I've been there when all of half of, I'll say more than half of the management left, quit, or was left or was, was let go, you know? Um, and it's very frustrating, you know, because when, when you see stuff like that, and not to mention that our turnover rate is just high because the type of labor that we put up, the type of labor that we put up with is very strenuous on us, man. You know, um, it's not easy for anybody. Like, you really have to be crazy. You have to be driven. And, or, or either you gotta be money hungry to work these type of jobs, right? The most hours I've worked at this place is like about 18 hours. I think I slept in the car for like an hour or so, and then I actually drove home, you know, but I've had times where I've put up 14, 15, 16 hour days back to back to back to back, you know? And that's, it's strange with some of your mental, like you, it has you thinking crazy, why am I doing this? Like. What is this for, you know? And it's just gotten harder and harder. We get blamed for a lot of the hours that we have, but it's never our fault though. But we get blamed for it. They bring in the volume, the volume upticks goes, it just goes all the way up there, you know? So with that comes like mental safetyness, you know? Uh, It's just not safe. You driving home, you dozing off and all that good stuff, but it's not good, man. You know, cause sometimes I be scared for myself, my wife, you know, she be worried about me. But by the time I get home, she's sleeping. Whenever I get ready to leave, she's damn near barely getting out of bed, you know? So I'm out of the house before she gets up on her own back in the house by the time she sleep, man. 
you know, and it, it, it's it's been it's been hard, bro. It's really been hard, man. And I see people go in and out every day. I've been a trainer for the last two years, and I can honestly tell you, out going back to this past June of 2021, I probably trained about 70 people, and yet we still get out at 12, 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, coming in at 10 10 a.m. My schedule is Monday through Friday. Right? But it's been hard, man. Um, right now, I'm on my fourth gym. And as I said, with the type of work, the amount of hours that we put up, it's not our fault, bro. It's not our fault that we work all these hours that we get people, I like, train people every week and we still don't get to where we need to be. And I mind you, I'm not a supervisor. I've been offered supervisor and I've turned it down. Because it could be easy because my the supervisors, they don't do anything, man. I'm just plain and simple. They really don't, they really don't do anything. I deal with 90% of the time, I'm doing all of dealing with all of the employees that come on board, making them comfortable, making sure that they're working safely, making sure that they're having a comfortable experience. And I do my best at that. And I have the respect for them people. I have the respect from those people. I get more respect as a trainer from everybody that works for my company than my management does. Outside of paperwork, the supervisors don't do every don't do anything. I do everything around the board. I work the computer. I do lift driver. I select. I train. Whatever I see that wherever I see that there's help needed around that warehouse, I do that. And my warehouse manager knows that. But there's somebody above him, a GM, you know. But I've given my all to this company. I've seen a lot of people give their all to this company. I got people that's been there for like 10, 12, 15 years and a little higher. And they're getting to the point where they just don't want to be there. And I asked them, why Why aren't you management or whatever? Because, well, they say the same thing that I want. Like, same thing that I say. They don't feel comfortable being that management because they don't feel like they got it together. And I 100% agree with them. You know, um, it's very stressful, especially being that it's a food warehouse. But I'm at the point where it's just frustrating, bro. Like, I be wanting, I'm not going to lie, I be wanting to cry sometimes, but I don't. You know, because, like, I feel like I'm a strong individual. But because of the, the, the sacrifices that I made, given most of my life and time to this company that don't even care for me, you know, I've been through all types of stuff with this company. I'm not even going to go into that, right? But going back to me saying that I'm on my fourth GM, at some time, at some sometime early in my career, there's a point where they made us do mandatory six day schedules. That's damn near a hundred hours a week. And if we're putting up no less than twelve hours a day, it's close to a hundred hours a week that I be putting up, bro. You feel me? That's so hard. Majority of the people that we have in my warehouse right now are all travel team. Or either they work for other companies that are contracted to work where warehouses need help. Like, so if you if you work in warehouse, you know who these people are, especially Foods Warehouse. If you heard of Capstone or U-Chain, you know, those type of companies, their contracts that go and help struggling warehouses get back 
to on point to where they need to be in. In our case, we're not. We're not that. The rotation is so crazy with the new people that nobody, I don't know if it's the pandemic, but for one, nobody wants to work. Secondly, the drivers in there, they put so many barriers up in the warehouse to where it's impossible for you to meet your incentive quota. You know, um, you're injury prone. The fatigueness and the tired, the tiredness, it kicks in and it takes a tear on you. And this new gym that we have, he's made mandatory six and I've refused it. Mandatory six days a week, I refused it. And I'm not speaking for nobody else but myself, bro. I'm not speaking for nobody else but myself because it's it's hard enough. And I know a lot of people are coming up on the point where they just want to quit. Because I know people there, like, I've seen, I've seen it where people don't even last, like, their 90 days. People don't even last their 90 days, bro. And it's so bad. I don't even refer anybody no more because I know that they're not me. When I say that they're not me... I don't know if that person that whoever I would refer would be able to bring to the table the work that the work ethic that I bring. Because I can get a sign on bonus off of them, but taking the chance is not worth it. It's really not. I tell people about it, but don't use me as a referral. So right now we're on mandatory six. And I'm at the point where I just don't want to... I'm, I'm not doing it, bro. I got a text message today from my job because I have... I work Monday through Fridays and I have Saturday, Sundays off. Got a text message from my warehouse manager saying that I better get to work. I better get to nothing but relaxing with my, with my wife, giving my wife the personal time the quality time that she needs, that she deserves, this woman has been with me for 12 years, about to be 13 years. That's what I better begin to. With these, with these warehouse jobs are requiring us for you to sacrifice your personal family time, even if you got kids for whatever they got going on. And they blame you for whatever they got going on, which is not your fault. But they tell you it's your fault. Right? How messed up is that? You go inside and you get and you give up 13, 14 hours of your day every day. And then your job tell you that it's not enough. This warehouse is in shit condition. You know, um It's so crazy that they've been smoothing if you know what smoothing is, they've been cutting work off to make it to where we're able to get out at 12 o'clock, at least 12 o'clock at night before 12. You know, that's, you know, that's crazy, right? That's crazy to me. So we're not even completing all of our work. Like they, the work that they cut off, we end up having to do the next day, which is added on to the next one. And if they start smoothing stuff off again, cause it's looking like it's going to be a freaking 17 hour night, they start doing it again. So it just gets worse and worse for us, right? How frustrating is that? To be told that you're not doing a good job, that we're gonna try to force you guys to come in and work six days a week and take time away from your time, the family that, that you love and care for and if you don't, you're being threatened with termination. If you don't come in on your sixth day. Let's say I've been here, I've been here for about six years now. It's coming up in March, as I said. And you don't come in and they threaten you. How would you take that, right? You sacrifice so much. You work so hard. Knowing that it's not easy.
So, this text message come in. My wife is sitting across from me. I tell her, I'm like, baby, my boss just texted me. He say, you better get into work. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I didn't even open the text message. Because when I go in tomorrow, I'm expecting them to call me upstairs for a conversation. And yeah, that's cool. But eventually, I'm going to end up getting terminated from this job. Because I'm not going to let them walk over me. I know what my worth is. I know what I bring to the table. And I have a feeling that that day is coming. My brother-in-law that was there before me, he, he was there for 10 years. He's recently departed from them because it's requiring too much. He got brand new twins. He also has my my nephew, his uh, eldest son, which is only about to be eight years old, but my brother-in-law's sacrificed and lost seven years of time from his son and his wife. It's so much going on that he didn't even get to actually do his, his actual job for almost a year. So he quit. Put in his two weeks. Then he departed from there. He brought me there. And when he told me that uh, he was departing, I was happy for him because of the smile on his face, you, you know, it's crazy. <laughs> you know, the smile on his face. You know, I know he didn't want to leave. But he had to do what he had to do. Now I'm coming to you guys for advice. I have a decent saving. But I don't wanna I don't plan on working for anybody anymore. I really don't want to work for anybody anymore because I've done it for so long. And I'm thinking of how I could go about my life after I separate myself from this company whether they fire me or I quit I never quit anything I would rather them fire me you know because the smart thing would be is for let them fire me I collect but I do something with that money my 401k I have a hefty 401k I'm trying to count I'm contemplating taking out all of my 401k Putting half of it into a hedge fund, the second half. Invest it into something else that'll be beneficial to my lifestyle and to where I know that me and my wife could lead a, a, a happy life, you know. Um, and I'm not saying that we're not happy right now because we are, but we could be better. And I'm looking for advice for you, from you guys. What can I do with my 401? I say I got about 45,000, and just to be straight with you, in my 401. What can or should I do with that 401 that could help me make money over time for the rest of my life? It's a sacrifice, I know. It's a scary sacrifice. This is a big leap of faith. Oh my God, it's a, it's a leap of faith. But I'm just tired, man. If you guys could help me out, let me know what is it that I can do. to put me in a position to where I don't want to have to work or I don't have to work for anybody anymore. Because everybody's goal is financial freedom. And I'm not saying that it's just going to come 
at the snap of the finger because I know it's not. So I'm looking for advice. I need you guys' help. If you could, like, comment, and subscribe to this YouTube, my YouTube. I am Parlay. You know. It's normal to be nervous about decisions like this. Am I scared? Yes. Am I willing to take this chance? I am. Because I know I could be happier. Like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know. Let me know what I can do. What I should do after I depart from this job. Okay? Thank y'all. Y'all you know, get back at me.